I've delivered over 250 seminars and workshops, and here are my five top rules that made me a confident public speaker. One, commit to a daring practice. On my first day of speaker training, I was only meant to be sitting in the audience and watching the speaker speak and learn the content and learn how he delivered, how he engaged with the audience. Little did I know that that's not what the head speaker had planned. We were in front of about 40 year 12 students and I was writing down, taking down a few notes. And then the head speaker asked me, hey Himmel, um, given that you were in year 12 last year, do you have anything you want to say to these guys? And then at that moment, I didn't hear initially what he, what he said um, until he repeated it himself again. And I was like, oh, oh me, um, you, you want me to speak now? And in that moment, I like when I tell you I died, I literally died. There wasn't like a single shred of like confidence and peace in me left when he said those words. Cause I was like, crap, I don't have anything prepared for anything at all. What am I going to do when I, when I, if I go up there now and then start speaking to all these year 12 students? But I did anyway. Um, and so with Niagara Falls under my armpits and my heart beating out of my chest, I stood in front of that audience and before I knew it, I was speaking for about 10 minutes. Now there's a few things that we can learn from that. Well, two main things really. First one is, is that it's better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. And two, I survived. I didn't die. More on the first point later, but on the second point, this is incredibly important. I survived. A lot of the fear around public speaking comes because we are so concerned about what other people are going to think of us. Oh my God, is my hair okay? Oh my God, is what I'm wearing appropriate? Is what I'm going to say appropriate? Is it going to trigger anyone? Are people going to even listen to me? Oh my God, they're probably judging me really hard right now. Like all these thoughts come into our minds. And so we get really concerned about what other people think of us. And then as a result, we get extremely nervous. And they say public speaking is one of the biggest fears in the world. And it's something that if you over overcome, um, it can be an incredible boost to your confidence. And so knowing that it might be scary in the beginning, I encourage you to put yourself in as many situations where you get the opportunity to public speak as possible. Because at the end of the day, of course, in the beginning, it's gonna be definitely extremely daunting and you're gonna have a lot of nerves, but the more you do it, eventually that feeling will turn into a feeling where it's just a very slight nervousness that you get before you get up in front of the crowd. It took me about two years and around about 80 to 100 programs to really get over that deep sinking feeling. So I encourage you to commit yourself to daring practice. If it means throwing yourself in the deep end, go ahead and do it. When I got thrown in the deep end, it was probably one of the best things that have ever happened to me with regards to my public speaking career. A second rule I wanna share with you is to recognize that the audience is your friend. What we tend to do when we public speak is we present. And so we not only present content, we also present ourselves in a different way. You'll stand up right, you'll speak extremely formally. And so you'll end up pretty much presenting a different version of yourself. When we do this, it's hard for our personality to actually seek into the words that we are saying. Sure, it'll get you by, like it'll get you through the speech, but true confidence is when you, like your own personality can seep into your words. The best piece of advice I have ever gotten around this is to see the audience as if they are your friend and then therefore talk to them as if they are your friend. When we do this, the tone of our speech becomes less presenty and more conversational. When I deliver presentations, it's a lot to do with meaning, passion, purpose, and all those really nice things. And so what I tend to do and the thoughts that I tend to have is to see my audience as if they were like my best friend. And I was, you know, at a lookout, it was at night, you know, we're seeing the city lights and all that. And we're just having like a really deep and meaningful conversation. And so that means that I'm letting them in to my life. I'm letting them into my thoughts. I'm letting them into my mind, which can be obviously extremely vulnerable but it's a way of really connecting with the audience and giving them an experience that they can really almost never forget. I think if you can really talk to your audience as if they were your friend, you can really try your best to let them in. And this is how we can really connect with people through our speeches. Three, know your stuff. If you go into your speech knowing very little about your topic, then there's a really good chance you're gonna be nervous. As I said at the beginning of this video, it is better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. Not only should you have material ready, but you should know more about the topic than you need to know. Because the more you know about a topic, the more confidently you'll be able to public speak. And therefore, the less nervous you're going to feel. And so do your research and reflect on your content so you can get that extra edge when you deliver your talk. Four, own your stuff. If you wanna truly, truly, truly be confident about what you're saying, then not only should you know your stuff, you need to own it as well. 
It's a very subtle thing because a lot of it has to do with time. A really good way to own your stuff is to trickle in a few examples of your own experience about whatever it is that you're talking about. Find an opportunity somewhere in your speech and give like an anecdote. And the reason why that's so important is because when you do that, the audience feels as if, oh, you know what, this person, they really know what it is that they're talking about because they've been through it themselves. And if you can't find your own personal anecdote, then find someone else's story that really fits into that really well. And so really now where I have this level of confidence where I feel like I'm actually owning what I'm saying and I'm an authority on the topic is only because I'm a lot older than I used to be. I have a lot more life experiences and I feel as if I'm a lot more mature now too. If you want a picture of how this confidence actually looks like in front of an audience, it's like, hey, I came here to deliver this speech today. I delivered it, I did my best, and I don't care about the outcome. That is literally what this type of confidence is. If you want a good picture about what this confidence actually looks like in front of an audience, it's like as if you've delivered a speech and you've done it to the absolute best of your ability. And whatever the outcome, you're not phased by it. Whether people liked it, whether they didn't like it, those things, they matter, but they don't matter too much because you know you've done your best. In my head, when I deliver a speech, it's about what do the audience need right now and how can I meet those needs to the best of my ability? And that's how you should try and navigate yours. And the fifth and last rule, that may seem like it's really obvious, but it's still extremely important because a lot of us forget to do this. That is breathe. My friend, take a damn breath. Like before, during and after your presentation, make sure you take a breath or like stop at certain times, learn how to breathe. And it's really important because this is something that we can very often forget to do because we get so caught up in the moment or we get so caught up in our nerves, we can forget to actually take a breath. And what I found was, was at the beginning of my presentations, I would very often talk really, really, really fast. And then as a result, I'd forget to breathe. And so halfway through the presentation, my words would be muffled. I'd be swallowing my words. I'd also be less articulate as well. I'd just basically be all over the place. And so a kind of way to combat that, um, like I came up with a practice that I do now where like before I deliver a presentation, I'd either go off into the wings or I'd go outside and I'd take five deep breaths, just like this, like. Like I just do five of them and that that would help me to slow down. It helped me ground myself. It would mean that instead of my nerves being really, really, really shaky, it means that all of a sudden that this kind of calms down as well. Like you'll notice that when you're nervous, excited or stressed, your breathing's all over the place. Like it's extremely fast paced. When you're scared, your heart's beating at hundred miles an hour. So you're, you're breathing really shallowly. And so when you take that and you go and you deliver a talk, then all those nerves come through your words and the audience feels it as well. But when you take a moment to stop and breathe and relax a little bit, it means that you can also control your nerves because when you're relaxed and when you're chill, your breathing is really steadily paced. And so if you can control your breath, you can control your nerves. And that's it. Those are the five rules that made me a confident public speaker and I hope they can help you as well. If you liked the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and I will definitely see you in the next video. I'll catch you later. Bye.